suppose you haven't come to lend a helping hand? Right, first time. What are you up to in here? I should have thought it was perfectly obvious. Mr. Tetlock and Mrs. Leathers very kindly volunteered to clean up the hall after the jumble sale, and uh, I'm counting the takings. Oh, we are, are you? I see you've given yourself a sitting down job. Sitting there like Queen Bee while you have two old age pensioners with hearts of gold doing the donkey work. You're looking pale, Mrs. Leathers. He made you do a lot of lifting. Hey, no, I'm all right, Mrs. Sharples. Don't worry. As a matter of fact, Mrs. Sharples, me and Nancy here offered to do the cleaning, <laughs> and Mr. Swindley agreed. Agreed? So wonder he didn't faint with relief. Mention hard work to some folk and they break out in a rush. Now, Mrs. Oh, I can just see you sitting there like mammon in his temple, running your hands through your ill-gotten gains while two helpless souls... Now, look, Mrs. Sharples, I've already told you that me and Nancy are willing to muck in. And we've still got a bit of gold left in as yet. Ah, oh, I suppose that's why Dr. Graham gets right as cramp making prescriptions out for you every week. You're going to tell me, Mr. Dottler, I know this fellow only too well. If it's only to keep the peace of the Sabbath, I will volunteer to clean the rest of the hall myself while my two good friends count the chickens. Oh, I'm much better off at the cleaning, Mr. Swindley. I never were any good at reckoning up. Oh, well, don't you worry about that at all, Mrs. Dennis. I insist. Oh. Please. Now, Mrs. Sharples, who seems to have our welfare at heart, perhaps care to roll up her sleeves and help. Well, I roll up my sleeves, you'll be the first to duck me, lad, so don't you come the great I am with me. I've done my whack for this jumble safe, dishing out pock and park into the ravaging hungry odds of Coronation Street, and by gum can they shift it. So wanted to me not how I'm dead in the beds with bellies like beach balls. I put in enough hard labour on that refreshment stall to feed a tribe of starving elephants. I see. So that's your attitude. It's quite obvious you don't want to help. Oh, it's not a question of not wanting to, I'd be only too happy. It just so happens I've got something else to do. Oh, well, if you can think of something better to do than helping the mission and the church, I won't argue with you. Well, I'm very glad to hear you say so, because that's just where I'm going. Where? Church. Oh. There are some folk, you know, Leonard Swindley, as go to church and keep their big traps shut. And there's some as makes a great big din about going and doesn't. Well, I'm one as does. I suppose if you're devout and worshipers in your blood, and I'm just made that way, I can't help it. It's just my nature to be pious, and just you be careful with that pair of duster, it's mine. Uh, Mrs. Sharples, you wouldn't by any chance be going to church to see Mrs. Chavesky's lad christened, would you? Well, I dare say I might give it a glance, you can't be mean, can you? I mean, not like some folk putting up the fur coat for raffling so they can win it back again. Mentioning no names, you can't put it down to that lad, can you, just because his grandma's Elsie Tanner. Mrs. Sharples. May I remind you that even you are no exception to the commandment, love thy neighbour. Oh, you know, you go telling me, Leonard Swindley. I'm always going out of my way to regard my fellow sufferers with a heart of trust and a soul that's pure. And I'd count that money again if I were you. Swindley my name, Swindley my nature. Good morning. Who's beautiful? Who's a great big man, eh? Who's a cuddly, cuddly sponge cake? A goo, a goo, a goo. This little piggy went to market. This little piggy stayed home. This little piggy had roast beef. This little piggy had none. This little piggy said, all the way home. A goo. A goo. Oh, say hello, Antina. Hello, Antina. Go. Say hello, Antina. Hello, Antina. Oh, so you're back, are you? What's this child doing out here? Learning to say hello, Antina, by the sound of it. This baby lying out here, blue with cold, stuck it up germs like a vacuum cleaner. It could have been knocking back black and tans in the rover's return for all you knew. Oh, I don't somehow think so, Mrs. Sharple. Oh, would he be a merciful blessed if he'd been kidnapped while his mother, as she calls herself, sticks it out him outside all day like an empty milk bottle? Some of little children to come unto you, Mrs. Chavesky, and his nappy wants changing. Well, he likes being outside, as a matter of fact, and wants to know what's going on. You're dead nosy, aren't you? Anyway, he's only getting a bit of fresh air. Fresh air? In this street? You know why he's not crying, don't you? His windpipe's stopped up. It's radioactive, his muck these days. You know you want to read your newspapers. Oh, come on then, look. Hey, what's he got in his hand? You think it is? Stick a rock. It's a medal and chain. By gum, you are clever, aren't you? Well, it's lads christening, isn't it? Yeah. Well then, even though he's thrown out under the seat like a homeless refugee, blue and faint with cold, if that was getting christened today, he's having a christening gift. I don't care what sort of home he comes from. Oh, my sister. Oh, you shouldn't have. Hey, it's real simple. It must have cost you pounds. Cost me now. You are. Look, 
If you think I throw my money back on the kid of a fellow that's knocking out your husband's wages, what the overtime and waiting on it bargain, you must want your bumps feeling. Didn't cost me a penny, belonged to my mother. Well, that makes it worth more. According to my reckoning, it makes it worth nout. Oh, no, Mrs. Sharples. Hey, it's lovely, it's silly. It's antique. It must, it must be worth a fortune. Well, my mother having rest will never miss it, and I've had my christening. Any road, it would only push me place up. Well, they do say that the way to a man's heart through his stomach. Meaning? Meaning that if a girl knows her cookery books, she's odds on she'll hang on to a man, isn't it? Were you hinting at anything, Mrs. Sharple? Me? Oh, no, not on a Sunday I wouldn't. Because have a sandwich, Mrs. Sharple. Oh, I would say no. What's in it? Um, chicken, ham, um, and uh, lettuce and tomato. Larry Lindley had run out of caviar. I'll take a chicken. I'm not yeah. pussy. Hey, how about a bottle of oh, pale for well, Godfather, <laughs> then, I would you help yourself to me, sir? Would you like a bottle of pale ale, Mr. Sharp? <laughs> no, with chicken, that one. No, chicken paste, I mean. A cup of tea, then? No, I did think, seeing as it was in a cage, and that little angel sitting in his crown with his silver medallion hanging around his neck, I did think I might perhaps have a drop of that sherry, seeing that it's standing there doing nothing. Yeah, of course, Mr. Sharp. Uh, do you want one, ma'am? Yes, love, I think I'd like one. I'm not up on silver medallions, but after all, I am a relic. Not much, is it? Well, Chris, don't be long before you ever party like this, huh? Hey, give over. I've not found fella yet. <laughs> well, if you're out the professional godfather, Chris, you'll let me know, won't you? Right, I will. I will. <laughs> well, come on now. Let's think to little Paul, seeing as how I'm his godfather. Hey, that goes to me, too. Can I have a glass of ice? Sure, oh, come on, then. You're not a very good old Right, to Paul Chavesky, the best... Excuse me for interrupting. What's up? Well, I can't put toast to Paul Chavesky to nobody else for that matter. Why not? You're feeling poorly. No, but my glass is empty. You what? And much as I should like to toast that little innocent cherub, on his journey through life's hard and thorny path, I couldn't. Not with an empty glass, I could. I'll have to have a drop more sherry. That's threatened, I owe you, Jack. Oh, yes, I was invited in specially to have a sherry. Not that I wanted one. I must say, I can't see why an early christening should be made an excuse for sloshing bottles and drink around. But then I hadn't much choice in the matter. Oh, I think you were very honoured to be invited, Ina. Well, she did give her present, Minnie. Fair, fair. Oh, yes, I know, Martha. I wasn't begrudging her anything. Oh, I should hope not, indeed. Did the baby look nice, Ina? Oh, I should think it was lovely. Were you there? No, Ina. Well, then just keep your mouth shut and let somebody else get a word in. Oh, it was all beautiful. All the service. <clears throat> of course, us that were invited specially had a very good view. Though I must say, I don't know what sort of washing powder Linda Chevesky uses. I've seen white christening robes in swindly shop window, and that's saying summer. Mind you, you can't say out to these modern mothers, they know it all. Hey, and was Elsie Tanner dressed nice? Well, she did the best she could, you know. She's no chick, it isn't Elsie. But I'll tell you what, she didn't put it on like Flora Lindy at Jumble Sale, swanking with her hair done and cracking on she was a Paris mannequin or summit. Happened she didn't put no dolly blue in. In where? In a wash tub. Since when is Flora Lindley washed her hair in the wash tub? Oh, I didn't know she did. Well, what are you talking about then? I'm talking about Mrs. Chavesky. What about her? What happened? She didn't put no dolly blue in her wash tub, and that's why it wasn't as white as Ina would have liked. We were talking about Flory Lindley. I don't think I follow you, Ina. Flory Lindley at the jumble sale. Well, there's no need to shout, Martha, or only passing my opinion. It is a free country. I've told you before, Minnie Caldwell, you want to listen when Ina's talking instead of going on 19 to the dozen. Ina were invited specially. You weren't there at all, was you? Oh, yes, I was, Martha. I was on clothing stall with you. What? At the christening? No, at the jumble sale, Ina. I don't think you're listening. Oh, you want to ignore her, Martha. She's having one of her moods. You want to be careful, Minnie Caldwell. That tongue of yours is going to get you into trouble one of these days. 